La emisión está comenzando. Todos los asistentes están en modo de solo escucha. Good morning and welcome to a new ORH webinar. For those who doesn't, don't, don't know me, my name is Maite Saez and I'm a director of ORH Observatorio de Recursos Humanos. Today we are focused on Brexit and the main implications in four areas. Immigration, social security, healthcare and professional qualification. As you can see, we will keep talking in this, taking advantage of the suitability of the topic. However, we, we can give us uh, your questions either in English or in Spanish. And even if, uh, if you need um, the speaker uh, speaks uh, more only, you can only um, stand up your hand uh, by, the, by the platform or send us uh, uh, an, email, uh, an answer, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, question uh, through the topic. Okay. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, we count for this issue with the expert knowledge of the uh, health document and it's the global mobility manager, uh, Nea Larson, as a speaker. Nea, uh, it's your turn. Uh, you are the control. Nea? One moment. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, my name is Nea Larson, manager at GD Global Mobility. Today, as Maite indicated, we will be discussing very briefly, due to the amount of information and the limited time, everyone's favorite topic, Brexit. As a reminder, this presentation will be completely in English, but please raise your hand, as, as Maite indicated, if you wish for me to slow down a little bit. As we will see, there is a lot of uncertainty, but we will be covering the main aspects you should be aware of if there is a deal or not. And I want to make sure you understand the main implications of Brexit. For those not up to date with the current situation, here are the key dates. The first withdrawal agreement draft was published in February 2018. And fast forward to today, and we have approval by the European Union but not the British Parliament. The news of the week, of course, is that Spain has issued their contingency plan for the case of a no-deal exit to offer greater security to those affected by Brexit. In terms of the key votes by the British Parliament on Brexit, our eyes will be on them next week. On March 12th through the 14th, they will vote first on the exit deal, the next day on a no-deal exit, and finally, on the 14th, whether delay should be put into place to allow more time for an agreement. If the British Parliament does uh, not agree upon an extension, March 29th will be the final day the UK forms part of the European Union, and the next day, March 30th, the UK will be considered a third country, and the Spanish contingency plan will enter into force. The contingency plan will be applied when there's no exit agreement, and it will be valid through December 31st, 2020, pending the UK applying reciprocal measures. If the exit date is extended, then please keep in mind that these dates, especially the exit date itself and the application of the contingency plan will also be pushed back. Specifically, we will look at the two possibilities, with and without a deal in terms of immigration for British nationals and their non-EU family members, social security, especially in terms of assignments and receiving benefits, healthcare, and the recognition of professional qualifications from the UK. We have two scenarios looming ahead of us, an orderly Brexit with an exit agreement, which determines the situation during the 21 month transition period. One side to this is to allow security for citizens and companies immediately after Brexit. Additionally, it allows time to finalize the post-Brexit agreements in terms of social security, for example, and determine any modification procedures. A hard Brexit, on the other hand, will rely specifically on unilateral decisions by the member states and bilateral agreements between the UK and the member states. The Spanish contingency plan will enter into force uh, immediately after Brexit for a period of 21 months, being a clear example of a unilateral decision by Spain. First, we will be looking at the impacts on immigration in Spain 
as well as a brief mention of the procedures already announced in the UK. To start, I want to clarify the current situation for British citizens and their family members in Spain as EU citizens. They maintain the same rights through the exit date as any other EU citizen. Their situation is demonstrated either by the EU registry certificate for the first five years of residency in Spain, considered temporary residency, or the permanent EU registry certificate after five years of proven continued residency in Spain. You will know if you have the permanent status as it will be clearly indicated on your EU registry certificate, which will be in the form of either a green sheet of paper or a green card size paper. Additionally, we recommend that each citizen city hall registration is up to date, as this can assist in proving residency after Brexit, as we will see later on. The specific rights as EU citizens include residing without any activity, studying and working, and these rights also apply to their non-EU family members who can also work, reside and study. First scenario. The UK Parliament approves the Brexit agreement, and let's assume that the conditions in the agreement uh, applicable here remain unchanged. At the moment, this is too good to be true, but let's briefly look at what it would entail. This, would initi this will initiate a, a period after March 29th, which will allow British citizens and their families to continue to reside in Spain under the same conditions as prior to the exit date. The exit agreement establishes a transitional period um, through December 31st, 2020, applicable to those British citizens and their families uh, residing in Spain as of March 29th, as well as those arriving post-Brexit. The right to work, study, and reside will continue to apply. During the transition period under the Brexit agreement, Spain will publish a specific modification procedure to change from their current status as EU citizens to third country nationals. If the, if the applicants have temporary residency, they will receive a temporary residency permit. If they already hold permanent residency or can prove five years of continued residency in Spain at the time of application, they can apply for permanent residency. One benefit uh, that permanent residency holders under the withdrawal agreement will have over other third country nationals is that they would be able to leave Spanish territory for up to five consecutive years without losing their residency rights in Spain and the coverage under the withdrawal agreement. After processing this uh, modification, the applicants can apply for their foreigner's identity card, also known as a TA, demonstrating their new status as beneficiary of the exit agreement. Which brings us to an exit without an agreement. For several months, this has seemed to be a reality, causing a lot of uncertainty for companies and citizens. Thankfully, the contingency plan established by the Spanish government last week has helped to quell our fears. This plan is temporary and unilaterally established by the Spanish government and relies on reciprocity by the UK government. Otherwise, two months after the exit date, the contingency plan will no longer be in force and the special measures will no longer apply. The aim of the plan is to guarantee the legal security of British citizens and their families residing in Spain prior to Brexit and to facilitate the transition of the UK's consideration as a third country. When we say prior to the exit date, we mean to compare uh, with, an agree with an exit agreement because with an exit agreement, as we saw, free movement is still allowed post-Brexit. Without a deal, only those already residing in Spain before the exit date are included in these measures. The measures will finalize with the end of the transition period or when other agreements between the EU and the UK or Spain and the UK are established. With the EU registry certificate or residence card for EU family members, those affected will be able to demonstrate their legal residency and allow travel. The period spent with the EU registry certificate will count toward applying for permanent residency when the time comes. Remember, this is the five-year residency mark of residency in Spain, and not from zero, despite the change in the immigration regime. 
employment is still authorized and their contracts will remain valid. Please note that it is mandatory to keep all related documentation in terms of residency and the employee's mod modification to the new residence permit on file to demonstrate the right to work. A brief note about the current residency documents. The contingency plan indicates the possibility to modify with valid residency documents as indicated above, but also for those residing in Spain without their corresponding EU registry certificate as long as they can prove residency prior to Brexit. This will be a longer procedure as the modification will require an analysis to ensure that the applicant was in fact residing in Spain prior to Brexit, rather than the more simplified modification procedure for those with their documents. For this reason, we suggest ensuring that the city hall registration, along with any other proof of residency prior to Brexit, for example, the labor life report, are valid. Uh, and you have recently issued documents on hand to demonstrate legal status until the modification procedure is complete. Later on, uh, once we are in the transitional period, the Spanish government will announce the modification procedure to be followed and completed during the transition period. Taking a deeper look at the contingency plan conditions, it is worth mentioning that such programs have already been established in France and the Netherlands, uh, and each offer an extreme in the spectrum of severity post-Brexit. Spain falls somewhere in the middle between these two. The transitional period for Spain will last until the end of 2020 to allow time uh, to document the new status as third country nationals while still officially allowing residency and employment. France, on the other hand, has established a very short transition period of three months after the exit date, and the Netherlands has allowed until July 1st, 2020. Additionally, France has indicated that the permit obtained after the transitional period will be equivalent to that person's applicable situation. For example, if you are studying, you obtain a student permit. If you're working, you obtain a work permit. Netherlands, on the other hand, will grant an open permit allowing work, residency, and studies. In Spain, the contingency plan does not specifically indicate which rights the citizens will have in Spain with the modified residency. But we do know that those currently employed will maintain that right by demonstrating that they are in fact working. Regardless, at the moment, no action is required immediately after Brexit being necessary to wait for the instructions issued by the government. During the transitional period, the same rights will still be applicable in terms of work, residency, and studies. Ideally, all citizens should have their paperwork in order to facilitate the modification procedure. But as we saw before briefly, even those without their documentation, but can demonstrate that they were already residing in Spain uh, before the exit date will also be included for the modification procedure. For this, we recommend all possible documentation, city hall registration, labor life report, uh, school registration for children, et cetera. Um, as there's no official state document proving residency as in the case of an EU registry certificate, we also re recommend limiting travel outside of Spain until more information is provided for such situations. For example, under normal conditions, uh, city hall registration is not considered sufficient to enter the Schengen area as a resident, but special measures may be issued indicating that travel is allowed with such documents. The permanent residency application will be simplified, simply requiring uh, applying for the permanent residency card at the police station with the current EU registry certificate, passport, uh, government processing fees, ID photograph, and city hall registration. Temporary residency will require a modification procedure, but remember that the time spent with an EU registry certificate will count towards uh, requesting permanent residency later on. This is a more complete list of what we foresee could be required for the modification procedure for both the main British applicant as well as any dependent family members, whether British or a non-EU nationality. I just want to point out specifically um, that if working, we suggest providing the work contract and labor life report, and if studying, uh, the school registration and transcripts from past years, um, as well as the historical city hall registration certificate, which might be necessary 
uh, to request from different uh, city halls in Spain, depending on if the applicant has changed addresses. For the family members, um, it's important to keep in mind that it may be required to once again provide a birth certificate or marriage certificate to prove the relationship and that it's still valid. And this would also have to be apostilled or legalized and uh, translated to Spanish. Um, as well as if they are at, at an age they are that is mandatory to go to school, which is ages 6 to 16 in Spain, we would also recommend the certificate certifying the attendance for that school year. It will be mandatory to process the modification, and it must be presented during the transition period. The applicant's legal residency will be extended until the new permit is granted. For those uh, arriving post-Brexit, this is not an aspect covered in the contingency plan. Therefore, we must assume that the current legislation for third country nationals will apply. New arrivals will require work and residence permits and visas, as well as student permits and visas in case of studies. The main implication of this is that uh, if you are considering hiring a British candidate, but they will not move to Spain until April 1st, for example, Please start planning ahead to prepare the work permit application, as well as the fact that the employee start date will be later pending the approval of the work and residence permit and possible visa. Inherent in Brexit is the finalization of free movement from one EU state to another for British citizens. These are a few options listed that allow mobility to and employment in other EU countries for third country nationals. For the sake of time, please feel free to shoot me an email to clarify information on these options and the conditions required. But I did want to make a brief mention that these permit options imply residency in the main state. For example, with an EU long duration permit from Spain, you are only authorized to work and reside in Spain. To reside and work in a different EU country, you must follow that country's national legislation to obtain the corresponding permit, but um, generally it will be an easier procedure, especially if you already hold the EU long duration residence card. Just the immigration sorry, procedure. Just one moment yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Yes? Just one moment. I have a, a few questions and I prefer to do uh, now. Then after. Um, the first one is, uh, hi, what happens if the uh, UI registration certificate is requested before 29th March, but the appointment is given after this date? Um, at that point, it's important to show that they are already residing in Spain prior uh, to Brexit, but at this time, I would say that the application would not be able to be completed. So they would, that would be a case where even if they reside in Spain prior to Brexit, they cannot apply for their registry certificate. And so other documentation such as the city hall registration and um, uh, labor life report will be required. Okay, the second is, uh, are our work contract and a NIA number enough in order to prove their residence in Spain before Brexit? Is the city all registration mandatory? I'm sorry, I cut out a little bit. Could you repeat? Uh, no, uh, are a work contract and a and a NIE and a NIE, NIE, N -E -N -I -E, sorry, uh, N -I -E, uh, uh, and a number enough in order to prove the residence in Spain before Brexit? Is the city in all registration mandatory? Well, the work contract is a private document, so by itself, it, I would not consider it sufficient, uh, which is why we suggest the uh, labor life report. Yeah. Okay. And the NIE, uh, I assume you mean the non-resident NIE, um, which once again would help, but it, it wouldn't. It, that does not prove residency. So it does um, recognize the person, but it does not. Um, allow residency, so that's when other documentation, city hall registration, um, et cetera, will be required still. Yeah, and the last one, uh, my, my moment is, what about short business trips for UK citizens in Spain if there is no agreement? Any requirements? Sure. If, it's, if it's just business agreements, if it's just for business meetings, um, the European Commission um, has confirmed that uh, travel will still be allowed, 
um, and business does not require a work permit. Um, if there is a short-term work needed in Spain, then um, if after the exit date, then a work permit would be required. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> You can continue. And just a reminder on that is that um, as third country nationals, British citizens will be limited to 90 days in a 180 day period in the sh entire Schengen area, uh -huh. not by individual uh, states. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can, you can go on. Okay. Um, let's see, so. So the immigration procedure is already defined in the UK for post-Brexit immigration status up to March uh, 29th. All EU nationals residing in uh, the UK should obtain their registry certificate. It is not uh, mandatory, but it is recommended. It is an electronic application. So if you or your employees hold this document, please keep in mind that it will not be valid from December 2020 onwards. Furthermore, those who have been continuously residing in the UK uh, for five years prior to March 29th can apply uh, for permanent residency instead of the EU registration certificate. Once again, the application has to be submitted before March 29th. From March 30th onwards, once the procedures are fully established in the UK, the applicant can apply for either the pre-settled status, which is the equivalent to temporary residency, or settled status, which would be similar to permanent residency. Yeah. Up until, uh, Sorry, yeah. yeah. I have some hands uh, asking for sure. uh, just, uh, speaking to you a little bit slowly. Okay, sure, not a problem. Um, so to go back a little bit, um, it's important specifically that uh, the permanent residency, if you comply, uh, to apply before March 29th. Um, from March 30th onwards, once the procedures are fully established in the UK, the uh, applicant can apply for either pre-settled status, which is equivalent to temporary residency, or settled status, which would be similar to permanent residency, up until June 30th, 2021. This allows an ample window for EU citizens to continue to move and work in the UK until the end of this period. After this time, local work permits and visas will also be necessary. Social security has been an aspect that we have found to be overlooked while discussing Brexit implications, but perhaps one of the most important when planning Brexit. I won't go into too much detail here, but the main benefit of the EU regulation is the coordination between EU countries, especially in terms of the minimum periods required for certain benefits. This is important for employees who have worked in several EU countries, as well as for any assignments. For pension requirements, the time employed in other EU countries is included in the calculation of the minimum period required for retirement, for example. For assignments via the A1 form, which is the certificate demonstrating that social security obligations are maintained in the home country, employees can be seconded uh, for up to 24 months, but also maintain the minimum contribution period and access to social benefits. Once the UK leaves the, uh, leaves the EU, this coordination no longer applies. This means new agreements and procedures will be required. Uh, if an agreement is reached for the orderly Brexit, there will be time to determine an agreement in terms of social security. For example, Spain and the UK had an agreement in social security prior to Spain's entry in the EU. This could take effect again, covering the same principles as the EU regulation, but the two governments would need to specifically reach this, this decision as it is not automatically reactivated. The EU could also reach an agreement with the UK instead of on an individual state by state basis, which would cover all member states, just as in the case of uh, Turkey and the EU have uh, an agreement in social security. 
If no agreement is reached, however, the right to social benefits in Spain are obtained only on the basis of effective contributions to Social Security in Spain. For example, the right to a retirement pension in Spain is currently 15 years, but as we know, in a few years, it will be up to 30. Currently, the time worked in the UK counts toward this period. If no agreement were to be reached, the time in the UK would not count to reach the minimum period required. Let's say that you have worked 10 years in Spain and five years in the UK. Under uh, the agreements that are in place currently, uh, you would be able to retire. Let's say you are in that period. Um, but if no agreement exists, the five years uh, worked in the UK do not count. And so you would need to uh, work for an additional five years in Spain to reach that benefit. The contingency plan permits including the uh, accredited periods of employment in the UK for the different social benefits, but only as long as there is reciprocity from the UK. For assignments under the contingency plan, Spain will continue to pay assistance and assigned employees can continue to reside and work under the A1 form, but only until the finalization of the assignment and current A1 form validity. After this time, local contributions to Spain, or vice versa, if assigned to the UK, will be required. No new uh, A1 forms will be issued after the Brexit date, which uh, basically counts on reaching a new social security agreement uh, for those assignments. Additionally, the A1, um, sorry, the S1 form for medical care will continue to be accepted under the contingency plan. Uh, to look at an extreme post-Brexit uh, situation, what will happen if there's no contingency plan because there's no reciprocal action by the UK? For assignments to the UK, initially the same rules will apply as already exist for countries without a social security bilateral agreement. Uh, sp uh, specifically, seconded employees are not subject to UK social security for the first 52 weeks of assignment as long as the conditions are met. Therefore, perhaps this will apply for certain cases of assignments to the UK, which should be analyzed at that time. Assignments to Spain, on the other hand, uh, does not have any special consideration as the UK does when there is no treaty. Consequently, contributions to Spanish Social Security will be required. To summarize, if no bilateral agreement is in place, local social security liabilities are required in the destination country and in turn contributions are necessary in both countries. So how would this play out? Remember that this is still a reality we may face if the UK does not comply with the Spanish conditions. Let's say we have a seconded employee in the UK from Spain with no immigration issues, because let's say they're either covered by their citizenship or legal residency. This means that they will have the right to work in the UK. Up to here, we're great. However, what about the situation in Spain for British citizens or other non-EU citizens um, in Spain in terms of immigration? Temporary residency under Spanish immigration law allows absences from Spanish territory of up to six months in one year. Permanent residency, on the other hand, allows up to 12 months outside of the EU, which obviously the UK will no longer form part of. Therefore, it is important that the employee maintain the right to work in Spain, as they do have a local contract and social security contributions in Spain to be able to be assigned abroad. If the employee has temporary residency in Spain and spends six months or more outside of Spain in a one-year period, they will lose their right to residency in Spain as well as the right to work. It is important to review this situation prior to planning any assignments to the UK post-Brexit for this reason. In terms of Social Security, up until now, the assignments to the UK were covered by the A1 form and the S1 form. I'm sure that those of you with assignments have both of uh, these forms and, and handle them perfectly. As we are considering the option of a no contingency plan, 
these certificates, even if still valid in terms of the dates issued on them, will no longer apply after the exit date as the European agreement no longer includes the UK. In terms of contributions in the UK, while assigned from Spain, where the employee and the company are contributing to Social Security, please review the length of the assignment. If the employee is within the 52 weeks of arrival to the UK, the exemption of contributions may apply. Otherwise, if beyond the 52 week period, local contributions in the UK will be required, meaning double uh, contributions in both Spain and the UK. To briefly look at healthcare, within Spain, the right to public healthcare will still be recognized. For post-Brexit arrivals, the same applies um, that the minimum waiting period must be met. If no agreement is reached in terms of assignments, the S-1 form will only be recognized under uh, the contingency plan under a bilateral or European Social Security agreement um, if approved. Finally, the recognition of professional qualifications of degrees from the UK in Spain. As you know, some professions, for example, doctors, lawyers, etc., offer official recognition to work under that official capacity in the country where they reside and work. If the professional's degree is from outside of Spain, a simple recognition procedure is required for degrees from EU countries and a complete homologation procedure for those outside of the EU, which takes much longer and requires additional documentation. This applies to all nationalities, not just British citizens who have received their degree or the recognition from the UK. To take advantage of the simplified procedure, we recommend initiating the application immediately. The contingency plan covers those applications already in process, as well as new applications, including uh, the students who have initiated their studies before the exit date for the year, five years following the exit date. Homologation will be required for those professionals wishing to work in their profession after this five-year transition period. This is a longer procedure and requires more detailed uh, documentation. At this point, we would like to go over the main points to take away from today's webinar. First of all, make sure you, your family, your employees, whatever the case may be, have their EU registry certificates. While not mandatory for the modification procedure, it will, faci it will facilitate the process. In this sense, uh, for employers, please keep in mind that when these employees have the status of third country national, uh, you must keep copies proving their right to work. Therefore, it is ideal to keep documentation uh, both prior to Brexit to cover the transition period, as well as the new residency documents after the modification and keep up for possible uh, renewals. If you are eligible for permanent residency, apply for it now before March 29th. As we have seen, it will be as simple as applying for the new residence card uh, if you have permanent residency for the modification procedure, although the final procedure must still be approved by Spain. Regarding the modification procedure, more information is still pending, but be attentive to the approval by the Spanish government. If it is finally necessary to demonstrate more complete documentation, as we listed in today's presentation, please remember that some documents take some time to gather and have a limited validity date. Finally, if applicable, please request recognition from the corresponding uh, professional association in Spain. So thank you very much for your time today. Uh, we have time for questions and any that we don't get around to or whatever, uh, please feel free to contact me afterwards. And if you are interested in receiving new information about Brexit as it comes out, uh, please follow GD Global Mobility to receive our updates. Okay, thank you very much, Nia. Your, your speech, has, to speak, uh, has been very, very, very global, interesting, and complete. Uh, I have a, a first one is, uh, what happened with the workers that are sent to the UK to work for one year, only one year? So there are Spanish employees being seconded to the UK, correct? 
it doesn't specific, you know, I don't know. Uh, okay, well, assuming, assuming that situation, um, it's important to keep in mind a couple of things. First of all, to review the A1 validity dates, as that will be that will determine if there is a contingency plan uh, and there is reciprocity from the UK that will indicate uh, to what point Social Security uh, benefits will still apply. Okay. Um, in terms of in terms of immigration to the UK, uh, that is covered under the pre-settled status in that case. Okay. The other one is what happens with the British students that come to Spain to work. If they arrive after Brexit, they will need work and residence permits. Or if they're interns, a uh, work permit for uh, interns. If they are already studying in Spain, um, we, we need to see the exact situation for the modification after uh, Brexit. But um, ideally, the modification procedure will include the right to work for these students. But it is possible, as we saw in the situation in France, that they will receive a student permit. Okay. Uh, the other one is uh, from four areas you have explained uh, about immigration, social security, healthcare, or professional uh, qualifications. Which one uh, are, the, are the main questions you, receive, you are receiving from companies now? In which area are the main questions? Uh, Social Security, definitely, um, yeah. because there's been the most uncertainty about that area. Uh, the information for immigration has always been the rights will be protected and, and please get your EU registry certificate, but nothing further. Uh, Social Security has been pretty silent and in fact, which is uh, we find hilarious, but it's, it's a serious situation, is that um, the website for the Spanish government on Social Security area is only in Spanish. Yeah. It's not translated to English uh, for uh, those who could be interested or uh, this could affect them. Uh, okay. Uh, what's your opinion about your, the, the, the contingency plan recently approved by the Spanish government? Is it not? I found it to be I found it to be to be very beneficial to to um, the British citizens and their families residing here. I was uh, pleased by several points, but um, two points I was unhappy about is that there's no mention on the specific rights after yeah. Brexit with the modification, as well as no specific mention on those arriving, those British citizens arriving after Brexit. And those are two points I would have liked to see addressed, but um, especially in, the, in terms of um, the transition period, it's very favorable. Um, to allow sufficient time for the Spanish administration, as we know, uh, can move slowly sometimes. <laughs> so to have a 21-month period, 21 month period to have the modification completed is, is very helpful. Okay, and the last one, uh, now that Brexit is here, do you think that companies are working harder uh, to, to kind of face it with, um, with uh, a position of strength? No? Uh, uh, replace with what? I'm sorry? Uh, um, I say that now that Brexit is here, do you think companies are preparing uh, for facing it uh, well? Right well? I think, I mean, the main problem is there has been no information until now, really, with, with what uh, Spain is offering after if there's a no deal exit. Um, beyond that, I, uh, the companies could only plan for their employees to make sure that all their documentation is in order. Mm -hmm. uh, so now with the, the contingency plan, for example, we know um, that if there's a no deal exit and there are employees seconded to the UK, mm -hmm. that the A1 will be valid until it is expired. You know, that's an important aspect because um, otherwise without an agreement, the employee, as we saw, would need to start contributing um, to Social Security in the UK. Yeah. Can we expect a big chaos? Yeah. Can we expect, Sorry? Can we expect a big chaos when Brexit was would, would be here? Can we expect? Sorry. A big chaos. 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 Um. 
I think the key will be to have certainty from the Spanish authorities and and the European Union. And you know, I think we'll see a lot of that next week after the votes by the UK Parliament to see um, if it will be extended to see if they can reach a deal. I, I think that um, there's a lot of concern will be chaos, but I think it will be a lot smoother than we than we foresee at this time, uh, just because the governments involved uh, can't allow that kind of insecurity. Okay, thank you very much. I have no more questions, so we will end here now. Before, I want to give thanks to all of us for being connected to his document for the support and Mir uh, for your excellent uh, analysis of global uh, implications of Brexit. Thank you very much. And I hope, well, uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next uh, webinar. I promise to improve my English next time, okay? <laughs> it's, a <challenge laughs> for me. it's a big challenge for me. Okay, thank you very much. Perfect. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.